Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I knew it was going to work because I heard you when I when I switched to this phone. I was able to hear you this time. So I said, you just had to bring me back in. Okay. 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 All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a very distinguished guest, man. Super Lover C from Super Lover C, Casanova Rudd. Definitely legendary, man. I want, I, want, I want to let these cats really know what it's about. Because if you're not familiar with this brother's face, I know you're familiar with this. Man, that was my shit, bro. Before we even we get to the start, I'm, I'm gonna let you know how crazy it was, cause that when I first heard it, man, it knocked me in the head. Matter of fact, we was out on the block, 72 Spruce Street style. Shout out Stanford, Connecticut. You know what I'm saying? Trinity Building, Coleman Towers. We outside, and I think it was on uh, Kiss FM, uh, Cool DJ Red Alert. Man, he dropped that thing, and the parking lot went bananas. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Big up to Red Alert. Yeah, man. I was out on the East Coast back then. It, it, it was a beautiful thing, man. So, like I say, welcome to Conversations. My brother, how are you doing today? Oh, man, I'm just living, man. You know what it is. Taking care there of family day to day. <laughs> there it is. So, let's start here. What were your influences that, that even made you uh, get into music or hip-hop? Oh, man, you know. It's almost like it's cliche, but you know, the cold crush, man, you know, listening to hip hop, man, on, on, on those stations, you can barely get, you know what I mean? <laughs> and um, man, just growing up listening to hip hop and it was just a, uh, uh, one of those things that, it was a cultural thing, man, you know, I wanted to do that too. And also the jams in the park, the disco twins, disco brothers, you know, back, back in the story of Queens. Um, just watching them get down and all the, all the, uh, the brothers from the neighborhood getting up on that mic. And I said, you know what? I want to do that. You know? <laughs> Were you like involved in anything else like sports or anything as you was growing up? Uh, you know, I, the first sport I was in love with, man, was baseball. <laughs> then mm, I got into okay. football in high school and I'm still a football fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's your squad? Giants, baby, you know, okay. <laughs> you know, I do the Lambo leap. <laughs> so, so when when did you start writing? Like, you know what? I'm about to start pinning this down and 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 see what I can do in the neighborhood with these guys. Well, I can tell you this: when I was uh, I was in junior high, uh, Rappers Delight came out. I remember one of my oldest brothers brought the record home, man. And I learned that record, you know, from front to back. And I used to go to school, you know, rapping. Mm. And um, I used to get a few people like, yo, man, go ahead, sing the rap to the light, you know. So <laughs> I, saw, I saw, I mean, I was a guy that didn't have that much attention, but that was the attention that I got, right? Right. And Orange Crush came out and Run DMs, you know, so all those things came out after the fact. But when I saw that, uh, I started writing lyrics try to do it myself you know what I mean um, but one of the things I knew that writing these lyrics you had to stand apart you had to say I'm different you know so how, how was I going to blend in with everybody else you know what I mean and nobody mm. knows me right so right. I'm just giving you a little preamble of how the style was created you know okay I mean? yeah so uh, but that's what really got me started man going back back in high school junior high school into high school uh, break dance and all that stuff in the high school, man. I used to pop lock and all that. And, and uh, you know, it's just the, the basic culture of hip hop. And that's how I got started, man. And, and, and after that, hooked up with a couple of brothers from the neighborhood. We used to call ourselves the Future Four, you mm. know. And um, I used to go by uh, MCC back then. Okay. <laughs> I didn't get the name Super Lover until later. Uh -huh. Another story. But, but that was the start, man. That's how things worked out. 
Kept okay. What's up? Shout out to my brother, Father MC. He in the building. Father MC. Yeah. So, so when did you become? When did you join your brother to become Super Lover C Casting Over Rudd? Like, how, how did how did that uh come um, together? So later on, this was still like right out of high school. We had a little crew called the Love Crew. Okay. You know, it was always about the ladies. <laughs> right. And and that's how I got the name uh, Super Lover C. Mm. That's how I got the name Super. Love to see. Um, and Casanova Rudd, of course. I see my man T Spunk out there, man. T Spunk, what up? Um, Casanova Rudd used to go by Spin Bad at the time. So he was the first DJ Spin Bad. Oh, okay. Um, but that's 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 exactly how things started out, man. And uh, that's how we I got the name Super Love C. Going back to the question, that's how I got the name Super Love C. Being down with a crew called the Love Crew. And that's how I acquired that name. Um, ended up joining a couple of uh, local rap competitions. Mm. Right? Father MC know what time it is. <laughs> What's up to Father MC? So, uh, and I say that because that's when I first met Father MC. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, we was at the USA Roller Skate Rank. Mr. Jerry Waterman, uh, who ran that, 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 uh, that division out in Queens and um it was an experience for me man because I've been through several several competitions uh, mm. coming in third place the first time then second place then then first place and then that grand finale so um where I almost had a chance to get down with the juice crew Ooh. oh yeah yeah <laughs> so, what happened? Well, I, I wasn't picked to win, put it that way. Mm. But, but out of that competition, I got a record deal. Mm. Yeah, so. So that, that was the thing, though, back then. You know, you, the talent shows, and then, all right, we'll put you in the studio and uh, let you drop something. How, how, how was your first deal? How, how would you describe it? Um. So basically, what ended up happening was DNA Hank Love, the DNA Hank Love radio show was invited to be the judges for the competition. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it was up. Um, and believe me, I, look, I'm trying to, man, there were so many people a part of that thing. When, I mean, we go way back to, um, oh, oh man, DJ Scratch. You know, I've met DJ Scratch, Clark Kent. I mean, so many different people. During that competition, we all came up together. Okay. In that competition, you know, um, DJ Scratch actually won the DJ competition when I won the rapper portion of it, and we toured together. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. So as amateurs, me and DJ Scratch toured uh, several uh, roller skating rinks, USA roller skating rinks on the East Coast. Okay. You know. Um, but the grand finale was between myself and Master Ace. <laughs> so, obviously, no, Master Ace was down with the Juice Crew, right? right. <laughs> That's, what happened. That's what happened. So, um, there's, no, there's a story behind it, but I ain't going to go into all that. Um, nah. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> nah, no, nothing horrible, but, you know, it's just the way the game goes. Right. Um, you know, he, he was... Uh, he was from Brooklyn, and they had their Brooklyn crew. I believe uh, um, one of them, I think, Half Pint. Mm -hmm. uh, they were from Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they looked out for their people. It was all good. Little, little, but, hometown, little hometown cooking, as they say. Hometown cooking. I ain't mad at it. But you know what? At the end of the day, we were all winners. Yeah. Yeah. I walked away. Yeah. yeah I walked away. I ain't salty about it. I walked away. Uh, as soon as I walked away from that table, as soon as it was announced, DNA from the DNA Hank Love radio show walked up to me and says, if you're interested in a deal, here's my number, give me a call. Mm. So he just, just like walked away with his deal, I walked away with mine. I mean, it was on the table already. All I had to do was give the call. Yeah. So once I gave, yeah, once I gave him the call, we talked about it, and um, that's how that ended up happening. And it wasn't a bad thing uh, with the DNA Hank Love radio show because they had a radio show. So from 
you know, you know how airplay was the hardest, yeah, the hardest yeah. thing to get. Yeah, and he giving you that spin. He giving you the spins. Yeah. So we got the spins, and of course, the awesome two came on right behind him. So mm. I remember my first uh, radio, live radio interview at the DNA Hank Love radio show. Awesome two came in right behind and asked us to do one with them. So now we got we got spins on DNA show, then got spins on Awesome Two. Next thing you know, it was Red Alert, and then next thing you know, it was like the world premiere, Mr. Magic, you know, WBLS, and and that's how fast it went. So, so, so what was your action, your your reaction, the very first time you heard you join on the radio? Well, I heard it on the underground radio, and before I heard it on, uh, before I heard Red Alert spin it. I always tell this story, so it's an interesting story. I used to work for the Housing Authority, mm -hmm. and I was a groundskeeper. I'm cutting grass. I'm in Ravenswood Housing, and they had like a uh, they had a ground floor level. So if you were cutting grass on the outside, you were actually level with somebody's window. And back then, of course, we you know everybody used to record the radio shows. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cutting grass, man. I'm, it's hot out there. I'm going back and forth. And next thing you know, somebody had their, their radio in the window. And I hear a world premiere. And my joint comes on. I turn the machine off. I put my hands on my head. I'm like, oh, my God. There was some young lady in the window. I'm like, that's my song. She said, boy, get away from my window. <laughs> <laughs> <Love it, hey. laughs> to this day, I don't know who it was. She said, boy, get away from my window and close the window on me. Meanwhile, my song was blasting on the radio. Wow. And it was the craziest thing because I had, to, I had to make a choice between, I was hired by New York City Housing Authority, by the way. I was a, I was a seasonal worker that they decided they were going to keep me. <laughs> 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 and I gave it up for the record business, right? It, it, it is. Story. True story. You had to. You had to. Yeah, so sure. so what was the what was the process of even putting that the album together? Like like what was that process like? Um it was fun. I mean, myself and Rudd, we worked a lot on a on a lot of production. Mm -hmm. Um then we linked up with Paul C, who was like the master in the studio. Like I mean, still to this day, you know, I haven't come across anybody close mm -hmm. that can say, hey, this needs to be that and that needs to be this. And let's try, you know, try something outside of the box and make it work. But um, learned a lot from from Paul C. in the studio. And um, first saw him operate an SB-12. Then the SB-1200 came out. See him watch operate that. Me and Rudd immediately went and got one. Um, started making beats and, and putting that whole album together was like the craziest thing because myself and Rudd, like, like the combination or the chemistry, because a lot of tracks Rudd, or ideas Rudd came with and a lot of ideas I came with and said, okay. And then we just wrote lyrics behind that way, you know? But um, it, was, it was interesting, you know, and a lot of people say it's a classic album. Um, I, I can't judge in respect, but it was uh, it was interesting. It was, but it was it was great. It was fun. It was chemistry. It was everything. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, a time stamp to a great era. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you know we we out having fun at the Latin quarters, kicking it. You know, and all the all the spots that used to just jump. How what was it like um, your first like in New York show, like after, you know what I'm saying, now the song is hot. What was your first uh, live show? Um, I believe it was the Zodiac in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. If I can remember, the Zodiac in the Bronx. Um, then I remember doing a show at Rice High School. Uh, these are some of the early shows. I mean, going out to East Orange to a college performing. 
Uh, so we did some of those things. Um, we did a lot of in stores. Uh, but yeah, I, I believe the very first show we did, but I believe, if I, if I, if my memory is me right, was like the Zodiac in the Bronx. Okay. I, and I, I don't know if you're familiar with that, that spot, yeah. man. It was a little small yeah. spot and yeah, we, we I remember. I never got to that one, but I remember people used to talk about that spot back in the yeah. day. Man. Yeah. Man. So, 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 so we, did, we did quite a few. What What was the temperature like in there, though? Like, like, were you nervous? Like, like, what What was you feeling? To be honest with you, man, we was on. I, I felt on top of the world. You know, you know, it's one of those things where you say, you know, man, I want to, I want to make these records, and you know you have that opportunity. Um, and still to the day, I say, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of cats from that era that wanted to do it that didn't have an opportunity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So at the mm -hmm. time, you know, you, you, you're sitting on top of the world. You just go in there and you rock, you know? Yeah. You just go in there and rock. It was, it was no shame, no, no nothing, man. Just get up there and do what we do. And that's what we did, man. You know, Casanova Rudd, a T-Spunk. Oh, man, it was a force to be reckoned with when it came to a show. Now, who, who who came up with the dance to do the jams? Um, I think that the funny thing about do the jams is it was something that we used to do playing around. <laughs> That's how the song was created. <laughs> we used to do, yeah, we used to just play around. You know what I'm saying? We used to break dance. You know what I'm saying? Slide right. on the You know what I'm saying? Came up with the James Brown dance. You know, just wrote a song to it. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's so. Funny because it was a secret thing too. Like you know, I used to I used to go home every day and sit down and write pieces to do the James. And here's another fun fact: a lot of girls that got them locked mm -hmm. was was do the James the pieces that hit the cutting floor. Like I wrote do the James. Okay, I like this, but I don't like that. And I get that out of here. You know what I'm saying? But then after do the James, we did Super Casanova. Then you went back to the book and say, okay, wait a minute, here's a whole song right here because I just, <laughs> you know what I mean? So you have pieces. All stuff I it. took out of do the James. You know what I'm saying? So you just wrote a whole new song called Girls That Got Them Locked. And that's when Girls That Got Them Locked was created. But do the James was, a, it took three months to write that because it was probably three, three songs worth of material. So, so you was just trying to, all right, yeah, I'm cool with this. I ain't cool with this. Let me put it aside. You just pieced it. That's different. I ain't never heard nobody say no shit like that, man. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it had to be perfect. Each line had to be perfect. The next one had to make sense from the last one. It just had, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes, you know, you hear writers, they just write bars. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, yeah. So, yeah. It, yeah, just write bars. So sometimes I found myself doing that, and I said, okay, you know, nice bar, but I don't kind of fit what I said here. That's why mm -hmm. I like I said, hey, do the James probably had three songs worth of material in it before I actually finished it and said, okay, this is what I'm going to go with. Wow, man. And y'all always feel like, you always said such a great party vibe. Man, y'all joint, come on. It's a party. Flat out. You know what I mean? I'm saying, was, was that always like your vibe? Was you the guy always going out, kicking it, having a good time on the dance floor, getting you one to one? That that was always you. Yes, sir. It was like uh, that's what we want to be. The ladies, the ladies, man, and, and go out, and make the ladies laugh and have fun. Um, it's just my experience too. And sometimes we we do things based on what we like. And you know what? I wasn't always in a slow jam. And I mean, I respected the, the great ones, of course, but right. it just wasn't my thing. You know what I'm saying? When I went out, I wanted to party. You know what I mean? When we come in here, we put we put the jams on. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? So that's the way I wrote music. Okay, you know, okay. Yeah, that's real interesting because, like, y'all y'all said like it's crazy because your music. I don't know how intentional that you thought it would be, but it really set a tone. Was that always just the, the mindset, like, like I needed to feel like this because I want to create this feel? Uh, um, not wanting to feel like that. I felt like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Man, I was young back then. Uh, it was about partying. And 
you know, we was the, the you know, the, the cliche was the, the, the light skinned guy with the, with the with the pretty eyes, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, there was a time, there was an era. So, you know, you, you made everything fit, and that's what it was about, you know what I'm saying? Um, like still today, a lot of artists are created, you know what I'm saying? We had to create what we had what we have to become. Right. Um, but yeah, but, you know, that's what we was back then, man. Like I said, we partied the love. Cool. We was out partying all the time. We was out doing what we did. Now we just had to take the music and put it together to make it, you know, and that's how we did it. What What were would you say was was the hardest part about that time like like once everything got going and then you seeing the business aspect where was was there a struggle maybe getting used to the the fact that this is really a business um definitely of course um of course that was the case um you don't you know at the time we didn't look at it as a business, uh, we looked at it as the art form itself. Um, and then you learn later on, well, there's a lot of money in this, you know, people are paying, paying us to show up. Then there, then they became, you know, the contracts and how important they became. Um, so yeah, in, in the beginning, we didn't look at the business aspect of it, uh, but then learn down the line. And then we had to make some changes in our contracts and all kinds of things. Um, of course, if I, if I had the opportunity to do it differently, <laughs> of course I would, right? Understanding the business right. part of it now. But, um, you know, there's a saying, you know, when you, when you first start in this business, you're going to lose first before you win. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Very true. Wow. That, 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 that's, that's so it right there. And I don't think a lot of people really understand that aspect of the game what what was um like when you start touring the country what what's some of your most memorable places that you toured that you probably didn't think was really feeling your music come to find out that they was really feeling your music oh man the west coast the west really coast. yeah man i went to la uh i remember you know i was in nashville tennessee uh, I mean, I ran into Too Short, uh, Ice T, and some of the West Coast rappers, and I was like, "Wow, you know what I'm saying?" And you know, we respected their stuff, but they gave they gave me showed me a lot of love. You know what I'm saying? As far as mm -hmm. what we were doing, um, and the other thing is just knowing that it reached that far. You know what I mean? <laughs> it reached that far. And it was out there, and we were getting a lot of love, man. But I, I definitely ran into a lot of um, West Coast rappers, um, share the stage, you know. I mean, Ice Cube, B.U.A., we did a lot. We did a lot out there in the West. Um, went to a couple of B.R.E. conventions and out there in Long Beach. Yeah, so, you know, and, and we were definitely known. We were definitely known on the West Coast. Wow, that that that's crazy, and I'm, and I'm sure that just really had had to blow your mind. How how was your family feeling about this this new surge of success that came to you? Say that one more time. You broke up. I said, how how was your family feeling about this new surge of success that had came into your life? Um, I don't know. It's interesting. I didn't really kind of measure it back then, but I I know that it was um. I was always a very, I guess, quiet and secretive person. I just did things in silence, man. Mm -hmm. So I, I can remember one day my mother, I was writing through the James and every day I would come in and I would put that blues and pants rift on, riff on. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of people think, or, or, or someone has said to me, they thought that I wrote do the James to the impeach the president. I didn't. I wrote it to the guitars. And Got you. Every day I yeah, every day I would come in, I would play those guitars, and I would sit in the living room, you know, and I remember my mother saying to me, what are you doing? Why well, come every day you come in and you play that, that same song? <laughs> I said, because I'm writing the record. And she says, okay, <laughs> left me alone. And it wasn't until, uh, I believe it was Word Up magazine, or one of those magazines, can't remember, I think it was Word Up, uh, had a party. And 
I had a couple of invites and I brought my mother down. And, oh. and she went, wow, you know? She was like, wow. So that was, that was uh, I think, when it really hit home. And then, of course, my, I have a younger brother who traveled with me everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Um, but they were cool with it, you know? My mother took it in stride. My brother rode with me a lot. And we had fun, man. That's what's up. Are you, are you doing anything in music currently? Come back one more time. Are you doing anything in music currently? Like, what you got going on? Um, I'm always doing something with music. I love music. It's actually therapeutic for me. So I'm always writing something. Um, I'm always producing something. I keep equipment, keep a microphone. <laughs> I just keep doing it. Um, yeah. But what I'm always still trying to find out where I'm going to go with it. How does it fit in? You know, I'm watching my son now, you know, mm -hmm. make music. And it's a whole different, uh, it's a different vibe. You know what I mean? How old is My son will be 22. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's my youngest. So uh, it's just a different vibe. But, you know, the, the good thing is when we talk about music, you know, uh, I just stay in it. Sometimes I believe just for the, the knowledge of it and, and uh, again, the therapeutic part of it. You know, you write, you know, music is, is expression itself. So sometimes you just sit down and you write things, express yourself. You know what I mean? And, and a creative is a creative. Yes. You, you're always going to create. It's an art form, so it's always going to be creative. You know, you're, you're creating, you're, creating um, your, your, you're taking your thoughts and put them into a project and creating something, you know, that has an output. But yeah, I, mean, I got some things that I've already recorded. The question is, what am I going to do with it, right? <laughs> man, you got to get it to us, man. Get it out here, man. <laughs> you know, in this game, they say, um, you know, I'm 56 years old. Don't tell nobody. But, you know, what am I going to do with it? You know, now, uh, try to land a record deal, put it out, out there, you know, I don't know. Can I still Maybe. do it? Can I still do it? Sure, I can. Sure, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Just you know, just just put something out just for your fans, your people. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like a gift. Here, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm I've, I've thought about it. I've thought about it. Man, then. Maybe you and Father MC need to collab on something because you know y'all y'all always got all the ladies. You know what I'm saying? That's that y'all bring the ladies to the whole to the party. Y'all might. <laughs> I'm trying to bring. I'm trying to get the old crew back. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Any 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 closing words or or advice you have to young people that that's tapping into this game? Yes. Because I think I mentioned it early, <laughs> earlier, right? You lose before you win. So make sure you understand the business aspect of this game, okay? And, um, you know, that's, why, that's my advice to my, my son, you know, just understand we have it. Everything's totally different now as well. So it's not the same as what we did years ago. But understanding the business, it's, at the end of the day, it is a business. There it is. There it is. Man, I want to thank you so much for your time. Greatly appreciate it. Glad we can make it happen, man. Like I said, you're definitely a legend in my book. And to this day, I'm, I'm still bumping y'all, man. I appreciate it, brother. <laughs> That's All right, saying. man. Thank you. You have a good, good evening, man. We'll stay in touch, my brother. Well, man, I appreciate you having me, man. And peace out to all else out there who followed and joined in, man. I heard Dave was out there too. What's going on, Dave? Father and Sam, it's been to a long time. T Spunk. Uh, our producer Big Stacks is in the building. <laughs> I see Denise out there. I see my people out there. That's man. Uh, for big, yeah, big shout out for showing up. And uh, yeah, listen out, man. You never know. Super Lover C may have something for you. Okay, we're waiting on it, brother. All right, now. All right, Dave.